How's it going, you guys? It's Scott with Everyday Solar. Today, we're going to be testing out some flexible 130 watt eco worthy panels versus 100 watt eco worthy rigid frame panels. Side by side comparison up on top of this enclosed trailer. It's a great test bed for an RV application, an enclosed trailer application, where we have flat solar panels and we can really test them side by side on the same day to see what kind of power output they have. But what are the trade offs that you need to consider for your project? Now, installation's pretty straightforward. I just used a little lap sealant, which is a good sealant and adhesive for RV and trailer applications to hold down the flexible panel flush to the aluminum surface of this enclosed trailer. Then my more permanent mount for panels on this trailer uses aluminum unistrut, which will give me a little more spacing from that surface and also a more secure mount. But I'll show you a little bit more on that setup and specific hardware here in a few minutes. So let's get everything plugged in and kick off our testing. So kicking things off in the morning session, we got a Delta II from EcoFlow running through a conversion cable here and then up to our power meter. We're about 10 a.m. and we're reading out 20.4 volts, 2.2 amps, resulting in about 46 watts. Let's check the rigid frame side and then also check the intensity of the sun with the irradiance meter. All right, on this side, we got the Delta 3 Plus from EcoFlow and we will be swapping these around so then in the afternoon, the, the flexible has the Delta 3 Plus, so it will try to cancel out any air that we might have. All right, so for the rigid frame, early morning, 10 a.m., we're looking at about 17.5 volts, 1.75-ish amps, bounce around a bit, and equaling about 34 watts. So let's check the irradiance, and then we'll go ahead and let these run for a couple hours and look at the results in terms of how many watt hours have we accumulated. So with the fluke meter, we can get our irradiance and also the surface temperature. We're on the flexible side, 414 watts per meter squared. You'd compare that to these panels, the flexible being a 130 watt panel. That is under standard test conditions where you'd have 1000 watts per meter squared. And then the surface temperature is al already up to 86 degrees Fahrenheit. We'd be looking at about 77 degrees Fahrenheit for standard test conditions. So it's heating up a little bit, but definitely not considered hot. Conditions today, we're gonna have some clouds in the sky. I think those will increase over the afternoon hours. So it'll be a pretty representative day. It won't be the most that you'll be able to get out of these panels, but it is a pretty standard day where you actually have pretty good sun. So we just finished up about two hours and 15 minutes of testing in the morning, collected the numbers for watt hours, and then switched over to the equipment to make sure we're canceling out any air. Now, right now, the Eco were the rigid frames only putting out about 42 watts, but I wanna give you a few different reference points to make sure you're making the right design for your use case. Here we have the Renogy 100 watt. This is my favorite out of the four we've tested, which were Harbor Freight, Rich Solar, Renogy, and Ecoworthy. Ecoworthy is the best bang for the buck because the price is usually so competitive, but Renogy really is efficient for the square footage that you have, how many watts per square foot area, which can be critical on trailers and RVs, but also when you look at the dollars per watt, it's very competitive. But the Renogy right now in the same conditions is putting out 52 watts. So instead of the 42 watts eco-worthy 100 watt rigid frames putting out, this Renogy 100 watt rigid frames putting out 52 in the same conditions. But let's go ahead and use this stick, which will put this panel up to a 36 degree angle, which is pretty close to the ideal angle for southern facing panels in my area for this time of year, which is right at about 32 degrees. Now with the correct angle, instead of 52. So remember, Ecoworthy was 42, Renogy 52 when it was flat. Now with the correct angle, we're looking at 84 watts. So just something you should consider if you're gonna be stationary with your RV or your enclosed trailer, should you build in some mounting hardware that you can adjust the angle to maximize what the power you're getting out of each of your panels. And I can quickly show you with the e-radiance meter why that's such a dramatic difference. So with the irradiance meter for this time of day, if I go flat, we see we only get about 640 watts per meter squared. Now, if I match this 36 degree angle as the panel's tilted right now, now we've moved up to 928. So the watts we get for the surface area is that dramatically different when you go from your level horizontal flat surface to an ideal 
angle for the direction your panels are facing. So just something you really wanna take into consideration when you're setting up your overall system design. So a little bit more on the mounting. Now this is just temporary, I use the lap sealant for the flexible that is strictly temporary that is not what i recommend permanent i have seen people use a lot of that sealant adhesive underneath flexible and then that's what they use with some tape i do not recommend that i prefer something more like this aluminum unistrut and i just have this temporarily again adhered down because it's a pretty windy day so i didn't want this panel to fly away but i'm actually going to drill down through there and put rib nuts on the structural tubing that's going across here and then bolt this down and then this will give me the flexibility for mounting so how are we going to mount there i just got some of these spring nuts here which give you the flexibility to put those in and then you just twist them and now you have a nut that's threaded and you could use something like an end clamp here this one's just off amazon again all the links in the description it comes with the hardware needed for standard solar racking, but I just take that off and I'm just using everything here. And it also has the adjustability to go up or down. So if you have a hundred watt panel, you're going to go down to the lowest setting and then you can just thread that in, or you could adjust it for a 200 watt or 400 watt that might have a thicker frame. And then that's how I'm doing my end. And then you could get mid clamps as well here if you wanted to have your panels back to back. I will have a much longer video in the future when I put all the panels on the roof here, but just wanted to give you a heads up just in case you had a project like this coming up. Now I love DIY and, and believe it or not, depending on your area, there are ways that you can do your own complete grid tied roof mounted solar system to completely offset your monthly power bill. I did that just a couple months ago on a rental property I have installing a 4.8 kilowatt system and saving a ton of money. So you will see a link in the description. You can jump over to Project Solar and you can start going down that path with very little information to start seeing what the size of system you might need and what are the rough costs. Now for many of us, we might initially think we're gonna do a DIY, but then family and job and everything catches up with us. But if that is the case and you still want to install the system, you just need a pro to do it. Project Solar can also help you out there and match you up with the local installer. So let's go ahead and jump in and take a look at these numbers. So let's go ahead and look at the results. We have that morning session that was 2.25 hours long afternoon session of the same direct duration and really balanced out well. So for the flexible morning section, we had 118 and those are watt hours because we're accumulating up the energy. And then for the rigid, that was 93 watt hours. For the afternoon session, very balanced, where we picked up 114 additional watt hours. So that'll bring us a total for the flexible of 232 watt hours. Then for the afternoon session over here for the rigid frame, that's gonna be 91 watt hours. And then that will bring us a total of 184 watt hours for our rigid. Now don't forget, we have a 30% larger in terms of power output rated panel with the flexible. So that is 30% larger. If we take these to the difference and then divide that by 184, this would be a 26% more energy was produced. So really to make a smart decision, we need to look at the area, how large are these panels? to see how efficient they are in terms of making the most out of that space and then also take price into consideration. So let me bring that up here and then those should give you the numbers you need to make a smart decision. And we'll talk about a few other factors you should consider. All right, so I've kind of already filled everything out. I do want to caution you, these numbers should only be considered versus flexible rigid today for eco-worthy. Don't take the dollars per watt that we have here and then go look at another video of mine or others and compare those. Remember, we had flat panels, not angled perfectly on a certain day where we were not getting a thousand watts per meter squared. So you wouldn't want to compare these with other videos or other testing examples. You just want to compare them against each other because both of those panels were going through exactly the same testing. So actual power was 52 watts. So if I took the energy that we accumulated up divided by the number of hours we ran, 52 watts for flexible, 41 watts for rigid. 
Then if I go in and I look at the area, so we have our length times our width for square inches, convert that to square feet, 7.1. So the flexible is considerably larger compared to 5.8 square feet for the rigid. Then if we go to average cost, this is a 12 month average cost on Amazon. If you wanna check what it is right now, just look at the links right below the video in the description. Flexible is gonna be a little bit higher at $81 and rigid is gonna be $63. Eco-worthy panels are some of the most competitively priced on the market. So these are actually pretty good prices. Then really the factors that we wanna look at when we're designing our system and picking our hardware. And I do understand you might have restrictions where you need exactly the right size panel. I get that, but these should help you out. So watts per square feet, how many watts could I produce? And again, this is just apples to apples comparison because it is not perfect conditions and we did not angle the panels. So we got 7.3 watts per square foot for the flexible and then 7.1 over here for the rigid. So pretty close, but a small advantage comes to the flexible panel. And then dollars per watt, is almost a wash. So we're looking at $1.56 per watt, again, just on today, just compared between the two, and $1.54 per watt on the actual power we're putting out. Almost a wash right there. So which one would I pick? For mine, I'm going rigid all day long. Uh, flexible, although right out of the box, you can see they perform fairly well. It's only about 78 degrees Fahrenheit outside, and we have quite a bit of wind today. So that has helped to cool down that surface temperature. If it was 90, 95, 100 degrees Fahrenheit with no wind, the flexible panel sitting against that surface is going to heat up and the flexible panels are known to have a limited life and they will really start to degrade in terms of the power that they can put out. You might be only talking two or three years, but let me know your experience down in the comments. That helps out the rest of the viewers. So rigid is gonna hold up longer. You're looking at more like a 20 year lifespan, which we expect with some of the larger 400 watt panels we put on our home. So it's really no comparison, unless there was a huge advantage for flexible. There is a weight advantage. The flexibility can be nice for certain applications. So those are an advantage, but unless there was a massive power advantage, I would not go for the chance of early failures, degradation over time, much, much quicker than rigid. Uh, because there's just not that much advantage to them. So that's my opinion, but also we polled you guys, the viewers, and over 130 people responded, and the majority did say rigid. So that's another data point for you. Let me know what you guys think. Let me know what else you guys want me to test. And if you wanna see our latest test, rigid versus rigid, which included Renogy, which is now my favorite 100 watt panel, check out that video right here and we'll walk you through the complete testing. So thanks for joining this video and we'll catch you on the next one. Take care.